roll yourself up to the middle of the goals and basically on the point of impact, your hips will tell you where you're kicking the ball. Now Elliot can face the goal. He can give it to Gideon and go for the last. He kicks the goal. Collingwood in front. I showed this series of, of edits of us where our hips were not in line with the goals and I played Shakira, you know, your hips don't lie, and I'm not going to sing it, but um, over and over and over again. Elliot loves to solve a problem or two. Elliot's got a couple. He's on fire. Maybe Jamie has the hips don't lie in his head, I'm not sure. One of the pearls of wisdom added to the footy conversation this year from Craig McRae. Mind you, when they kicked nine by ones in a row, I started they've all gone all stray on Shakira. Craig, welcome back. Yeah, good to be here. Chris Scott, hello. Thanks for inviting me. Uh, the bond between the two of you. So is the bond of Premiership teammates a few times over? Does it last through the years? Yeah, it'll last forever. Yeah, we were, we were close um, in our playing days and remain that way. I think, look, when you're in the game, there's not a whole lot of time for sort of people at different clubs to spend a lot of time together. So it's not as if we talk often, but that bond will always be there, that's for sure. Was it great, mates? You know how on teams you have the bond, but then you've got... The real great mates. Uh, were you, were the, your, you and your brother? Are... Yeah, I used to like him. He didn't like me as much. <laughs> <laughs> you just make great TV. Uh, that's, that's, that's not true. What he means is we started roughly around the same time. We're roughly around the same age. And Fly is a character. Like, that Shakira stuff. He's mm. full of that stuff. Yeah. He'll be great fodder for you guys for years to come. <laughs> Um, but I was a bit of a grumpy old bastard, really, <laughs> even when I was 23. Are you, are, um, so he and Leper, they used to drive me insane. Yeah, really. I knew if I made him laugh, I was funny. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Have you enjoyed watching Craig's success? Oh, I've loved it. It's been, for yeah, him and Leper, no. I think they've brought an air of optimism um, to the footy club, and that's the sort of people they are. They're kind of, why can't, why can't we do it? And I think, you know, that's sort of what I hear um, from, from Fly now, you know, why not us? Um, so I've really admired what they've done because, of, you know, it's not as if uh, everyone thought they were going to necessarily be in this position this year. So they've clearly had a great impact. I'm happy for them. Can I get you both a, a definition? Belief. Is, is it a token word in, in football? Is it just confidence, everything working well? What, 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 what's your version of what belief is and has your club got it? Oh, we just presented to our players again today and as we've done for a number of weeks now, just why we're in good shape, you know, why, we, why we're in this position. And we just provide evidence, you know, whether it's GPS or this data or statistics. You just find ways to, to fuel energy. And I've always been a believer. I've, I've really never really liked the word confidence. I actually despise it. I think it's an outcome. And, you know, the excuse of I can't perform well because I'm not confident I've really doesn't sit well with me. But, um, you know, being confident after your, your actions, I think that's a different conversation. So, so, yeah, sorry. So what's the one thing that you keep showing your group What's been a, 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 one of the constants through the year that you say, oh, I'm showing you again, I'm showing you again? What would that be? Oh, even just today, just showing stuff around our pressure and, you know, our contest stuff that we've been working on right from day one. Um, you know, when they first started, from where they started as a group on this journey this year to where they are now, it's, yeah, it's amazing, the growth in this group. So I just want to keep rewarding that and, and hopefully that'll continue to grow. People would say, and I'll say this, that you guys didn't have the same sort of manic pressure and tell me if I'm wrong, that you, you were controlled coming out of the back half, let's control the pill, and that's changed a little bit this year. Am I still going down a correct path? That it's a bit playing a bit more manic. Are we seeing a, a better pressure game from Geelong this year than in, in, in previous years, only because of the way you've, you've changed the game style a little bit? Yes and no. So I, I don't think the two things are linked. I think that you're talking about two different situations in a game, and I think even Collingwood, the control the ball team um, when they need to. And Fremantle were an example of that all year as well. I thought their success was built off their pressure when the ball was alive. But when they had control of the ball, they endeavoured to control it more. Now, I thought what Collingwood were good at, and I only watched it on TV, but they were really good at only giving Fremantle the mm. one that didn't put them under any pressure. Mm. Um, so I, I, I don't think that... It necessarily means if you're a control the ball team that you can't have great pressure when um, the ball's alive. So, but I think we've taken that to another level. It's pretty clear you can't. There's, there's no secret for any coach out there. Like if you don't have that, gee, you've just got to be so good at the other things. It's almost a, a prerequisite. Have you got a version of what belief is in in your coaching and in your playing group? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, I think I think it's a fundamental part of coaching. You're trying to um, emphasise the the parts, emphasise your strengths. We've been 
on record this year of saying uh, we, we went through a process a long time ago, probably you know even in October, really really quickly after the end of the season for us last year, sort of taking a step back and saying yeah. You know, Let's be as optimistic as we can around what we can do. Um, when, we, when we run into some hurdles, we'll sort of try to refine it a bit from there. And we'll, we'll, I guess we had some success early, which leads to belief. I mean, I think there is such a thing as, you know, false bravado and manufactured belief as well. I mean, that's a disaster because then the players just don't believe you anymore. You can't go and try to... Mm. If you're trying to sell a message every single week and they're not buying it, you're, you're in big trouble. So there, there's a fine line to be to be walked there but I think the, the evidence really helps and you know if nothing else we've been consistent and our best is pretty good. What was Saturday night in the journey of your season Craig? Oh it was an incredible experience um, Jared. we uh, yeah, fortunate enough to see 90,000 of mostly black and white and yeah, we don't take that for granted. Um, I've said this before you know, a couple of years ago you got the MCG with COVID and, and, um, and everything that came with that there was no crowds it was quite eerie but to walk out there um, early in the game and see see the crowds roaring and, and the Collingwood chants and you know, we're thankful to our Magpie Army for turning up and, and supporting us this year. has been a great ride. The defensive nature, and this is going to be a boring conversation, but it's really important. <laughs> we're looking at this great footage of you guys winning, but that's an outcome. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely an outcome. So when the game started, it dawned on really early, this game was moving really quick, then you guys got took control. Was that your best defensive game of the year? Yeah, there's Justin Lepich in the screen there. He doesn't get enough credit for what he's done with our group. Um, you know, we started a, a whole new journey of a different way that we wanted to defend. And, you know, um, you know just the, the little details of what he coaches. He's, he's brilliant at the detail and our playing group. He said to our group today that was the best we've defended as a group um, in terms of what Chris was saying before, trying to take away some of the uncontested brand and make it a little bit more live, which we knew could play into our hands. So, you know, Justin's an uh, incredible coach. What moved you to say... We're here to win it. Having been pretty fastidious in not saying that yeah. every time we've tempted you over the last six or eight weeks. Oh, because the reality was we're just not even close. So why would you talk about it? Like we're just process driven. I know the old Lee Matthews. You just want to qualify. We, we hadn't qualified until the last round of the year, or close to it. Um, but you get to a stage where you know the, you, you, you're within reach. That's that's reality. There's four teams left now, and we're very grateful to be one of those. And um, it's no longer too far away. You know, you can actually see it's close enough. But um, having said that, we are so good at going back to the detail in the process. We're, yeah. we're a process-driven group. Your first coaching year, your first I've got coaching... great hair, mate. I've been around a while. Has he got great Has he got great? Yeah, they're in there. They've always been there. I, keep, <laughs> I, I, I cut it short so you can't see as many. <laughs> as a, your experience, I know it's a group activity, but your experience as a first-year coach, preliminary final, going on the road to Sydney, is it is it beyond what... You thought you could you could do, and you and your group could do. Well, you're making it about me, but absolutely beyond anyone's wildest dreams that you think we'd be in this position. So we're we're sitting here, you know, excited by it. But um, yeah, there's so many layers of yeah, why we're that. in this position. And I you, know want, that. you want to keep bringing it back to me, Robert? But there's so many. No, others. I know that. I know yeah, that. So, and I'm, I'm really grateful to have Bolts and Leper and Hayden Skipworth and Scoot, all those guys. They don't get enough credit for what they've done to our playing group and. We, we get to a Friday night or a, a Saturday this week and I know they'll be really well prepared because they've done, done an awesome job preparing our group. But it is a big thing in your life, isn't it? Uh, maybe. I, I, don't, I don't sort of look at highs and lows of it. I just think it's part of what we're doing in our lives and this is part of the journey. It's a pretty cool ride at the moment. I'm enjoying for everything, everything it is. You sat here the first time and you said, I'm going to enjoy every moment of this because at your age... I'm enjoying every bit except for when you ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to enjoy it because at my age, I don't know how long it's going to go for. No, that's right. And footy's back to being a really special sport again. Do you, do you feel that as coach? Do you have time to sit back? I was speaking to your brother on the weekend. I said, footy's in a great spot. Your CEO and the rules put footy in a great spot. And we're seeing the results now. Do you see that as a coach? Do you feel that? Yeah, I do. And there are the obvious reasons with the pandemic and the, the stuff that everyone's been through. So, I mean, I, I, was, I got to the stage pretty quickly through when it was clear the AFL were going to find a way through the 2020 season. And it was still difficult, but an amazing performance to, to pull off uh, that year. And... I remember being really grateful. We went down in a grand final. It was really hard to take, but through, through that period, I was always optimistic that it was going to come with a rush once we got back. Everyone was just desperate to get back into it. The crowds are obvious. I'd, 
I've always been an optimist about the game. I, I, I go back, and this has not been self-deprecating, this is just the way I look at it, a fact. Go back and watch the Brisbane Grand Finals. The, the, the game's not as good. It's just not as good. The players aren't as good. Like we, we, I, you know, I don't know what your life fly, but I look at some of the guys in our team, I think, thank God I never, never had to play on you. Mm. Uh, and so I, I'm not surprised with the tweaks in the rules that have opened the game up a little bit. I'm not surprised we're in the, the shape that we're in, but it didn't feel like that two or three years ago. So mm. we should be grateful, I, I agree. You guys experience so much as premiership players and players standing up in finals, and you must look at some of your players and say, <laughs> and you have... Joel Selwood, <laughs> thank you very much. You must be looking at Jordan Ngoi right now, and he's not in Joel's class, not yet. And look at Jordan Ngoi and think, you're a special kid because you've been under immense pressure this year. You're asking for $800,000. You've got to perform. And you're throwing him in the middle. So, righto, this is your stage. You must be absolutely thrilled with what he's returned. Yeah, I think it's great... Um Affirmation for Geordie. Yeah, you know, when he was injured um, just before, I don't know what round it was. He got injured. and He got to work. He um, he had a mini pre-season, and I've just seen this guy. His body shape changed, and his energy changed, and all of a sudden, um, I knew when he came back, whenever that was going to be. That uh, he had, I might have had a quad injury. I'm not sure exactly what he was out for for a little period, but um, I just knew that he's going to be a different player because you just see a guy preparing differently, and he looks different, and he's had the chance because he missed pre-season. People forget he had three months off. He, yeah. he didn't start like the other group, other players did. So he's get, he's enjoying that for what it is now, and, and you know he's he's taking us to another level. So we're seeing this, okay? Yep. We're seeing this and saying what a great player. Behind closed doors, have you seen? Has the penny dropped for him, or did that penny have to drop for him in his in his preparation? Just talking about what he did then. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think. I, well, I'm, I think he's growing. Like he's growing and understanding himself and. You know, Jackie Lauder's done an awesome job with him, um, working on his private stuff, and, and you know we we know the environment that we have right now for Geordie is a great environment for him to bring out the best in himself. Did you did you go on Friday night? I did. Yeah. Did you? I don't know whether you're a note taker, but did you have to throw everything away that you were making notes on Melbourne and go, oh right, this is going to be Brisbane? <laughs> yeah, they started pretty well, didn't they, Melbourne? So uh, no, I'm not a note taker. I do it all in my head. <laughs> um, and we, we had a group um, in there, so it was, it was interesting how the conversation did shift a little bit, and I think it, it's been a trend across all the finals, and even the big games towards the end of the year as well. There's been um, momentum swings within games, and even the games where the scoreboard's been really close, there was a point, I think, you know, late in the second quarter where I think, like, Brisbane are right back in this. Mm. Um, and you sort of come back to that, you know, idea of belief, you know, and look... Melbourne just didn't quite look as good as they did this time last year and, and Brisbane took their chance. But it is one of the hard things about that first week. We, we haven't experienced it too often. But the f first sort of week off after winning a qualifying final... Did you take a joke then, did you? I laughed at myself, yeah. <laughs> He's changed, I'm, yeah, he I'm trying to speak from experience. I thought, actually, I haven't been there that often. Um, but you, you, you want to work, but it's like, you know... 50% of it at least is going to be a waste of time because you're looking at the wrong team. Um, but So what did you do? What was the weekend? Oh, you haven't had it before. You've lost yeah, well, and you've had, had to scramble. We have. It's been a while. It's been a while. <laughs> but what, what, do you, what did you do over the weekend? Is it hard training sessions, soft training sessions? What, what, what did you try and no, we, yeah, the we, weekend we trained on We trained on Friday uh, and we, yeah, we trained pretty hard. So we, we don't try to replicate a game. Uh, we, I don't really believe in that um, necessarily but no we didn't shy away from the hard work but it's it's very individualized as well so for example Jeremy Cameron was a bit crook so he didn't train so he did a session on on Sunday and then we'll train again Tuesday um, but no, a couple of a couple of days um, off Saturday and Sunday for the players and they bounce back into the club today so okay. it, it doesn't guarantee anything but um, you know it's, it's better than kind of hobbling in after a really hard game I would suspect a lot of theories in footy. One of the theories going around was that you might have had a soft, couple of soft games going in the finals. Will it hold you in good stead? And then you had that, the, the Carlton, uh, sorry, the Collingwood Geelong game was one of the best games of football. Well, your boys were really sore. Ours were really sore on that Monday after we played each other. That was a really yeah. competitive game, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. And I, I must admit, I find it a little bit hard to tell, and this is a bit of Lee Matthews as well, but... He always says, I don't care. <laughs> I kind of don't care how you feel. I don't even want to know. Yeah. I just sort of get on with it. And that's the approach 
I've tried to take. But back to the point, I think it was a, it's a reasonable point and it's something that we did think about um, leading into that first final. If you were to compare Collingwood's prep for that game to ours, yep. we played, the last four we played, three at Geelong, won most of them easily, played yep. one up in the Gold Coast, which is a fair way away from 90,000 at the MCG, and they were like 90,000 at the MCG, win by kick, 80,000 at the MCG, win by kick. Even Sydney sold out up there, really good team. They were different preparations, but you can't choose your fixture. Well done, then. How did nice. the two of you land with just one vote for Jeremy Cameron out of that game? Oh, no, I, I voted just, for it. I just, <laughs> compl- yeah. I just completely awesome. mucked it up. <laughs> right. Oh. Did you really? Yeah. No, I mean, actually, ser- in all seriousness, it's embarrassing. Yeah, it was. I, I, I always say post game, I feel sorry for the journos who got to put their best players in because I don't think about it. I take 48 hours to think about it. I just compl- It was just a complete. Oversight. Um, so he's getting five this week. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Very good. All right. So we might talk the SCG shortly, where that's where Collingwood's preliminary final is scheduled. And then tomorrow night, we'll be in the Harbour City. Isaac Heaney and Lockie Neal, who's had two splendid finals on the other side of the preliminary final equations on Players' Night. The Moment, brought to you by PointsBet. Enduring images at the end of an enduring career. Hudson will be a figure in footy. Yep. And David Mundy's wife waiting for him at the end of 376 games. A splendid last quarter goal. Honoured by opponents and fans of an opposition persuasion in a great way. So a top ten career games played of all time. Eighth is where he comes in. He's been a Dockers icon in amongst the most three influential players that club's ever seen. Now, you would have worked with him for, with a couple of, for a couple of years. Yeah, three, three years. I love him. And this is a big call, but one that I'm prepared to put out there. He's in the top three kicks I've ever seen, having yep. watched him up mm. close. Like, any, anyone, you know, you, you can argue, you know, probably 50 other players, but he was that good. Yeah, that was a beautiful way. It wasn't the result he was after, but the rituals around this now are quite perfect. So when the game's on the weekend and they couldn't move the ball, we were having discussions. You've got to give it to David Mundy because he will be able to get through this maze of people. Did you have instructions... Don't let it get into David Mundy's hands. Do you go that specific? No, not really. But you, you do um, you do encourage the players around to look at the kicker so they can see what they're doing with their eyes and their feet. And um, but yeah, in, into the point about Mundy, I, I think it's I think we do this really well as an industry now to reward the or acknowledge the stars of the game that, that deserve it. And, yeah, I think that was a great occasion for him. Great the SCG, player. so you spoke about it specifically after round 22 and felt that it had the, its dimensions had played a role in not allowing you to execute in the manner that you would have liked to. What are you doing specifically with an eye towards going back? Uh, we marked the ground today. You, know, you probably saw that. Yep. But um, no, I just thought I'd coach really poorly. I, I believe in setting the players up for certain things and to hopefully make them successful in what we're doing, and I felt that I failed in that. So I, I told the players today that, you know, um, we would be better prepared for things like the shape of the ground, you know, so that we can train on and be prepared for that. And, um, yeah, those little details, I think, uh, lessons learnt along the way. So how, do you, how did you coach badly? I just thought that the dimensions of the ground were, were different to what we've been playing at, and I didn't reference it. And I think that's poor on my behalf. Um, yeah, just is that a bit of a cop out? Is yeah, that they play 26 games at MCG every year. Like, <laughs> it's yeah, it's is that a bit of a cop out? Oh, I, should have, it... I should have known, Robbo. Like it, it, it just you just move the ball slightly uh, differently, and you'll have to set up slightly differently. And um, it's nothing major. I'm, I'm just taking accountability for for yeah. something I think I can do better. Because you couldn't move the ball that game. Is that how you saw it? Um, it was that, some, they they seemed to strangle you a little bit. Oh, I was a hard scoring, uh, hard for both teams to score. I think they kicked 77 points from memory. We kicked. Mm. 59 or something like that. It was hard. It was hard for both teams to score, but um, yeah, I thought they defended the ground really well, and their pressure was outstanding. So we know that's coming. And, um, I don't think they get as much credit, maybe because they're based in Sydney. They're in really, really good form, mm. and they're going to be really difficult to beat. It's been reported late today that Tanner Bruin will request a trade to Geelong. Is that consistent with what you know? Uh, I'm a bit removed from it at the moment, which is um, the way we kind of set it up, especially at this time of year. I must admit, I'm kind of surprised when you hear players have requested things. There's a lot of water to go under the bridge before it can actually happen, but 
No, I'm a bit removed from it. Would you like to bring him in? Yeah, but if I answer that question, we can't stop with that. It sort of extends to about another 60 or 70 plays in the comp, so... Yes, with an And what do you have to give up is the next yeah, and question. Like, I think this is my 12th year now, and I, I do actually have a passion for sort of this part of the game. I think the strategic management of your TPP, your long-term list management planning, might be your biggest competitive advantage in the game. So it'd be crazy for a coach with a passion for it and an interest not to be involved in it. But there's a timing issue. Like, where, what have we got? You know, it's less than two weeks now if things go well. So I'm focused on the now. Can I ask you one question? Are you involved in any way with the Brody Gundy discussion? Or is that the list management group? Oh, minor. I would have thought minor in, in, in some of it. But I'm, yeah, Graham Wright, I'm a bit like Chris. We're sort of so consumed in the ground balls. Like, let's, let's get that right. And then, you know, got Graham Wright with huge experience in this area. And I just, you know, new coaches trust the process of what that is. Just give us a quick insight into preliminary finals as you've learnt them. So you played in five and you've been in coaches' boxes for uh, more. You've played in three and coached in eight. What is it about preliminary finals, Craig? Uh, I, I think it's... Well, in, the MCG in particular is as neutral as you're going to get it. Um, grand final today becomes a little bit less than that. But I, I find it probably the hardest game to win. I think they're so difficult to win. And, um, yeah, I, there's so many reasons for it. There's... It becomes a knockout now. No, we played a game only two weeks ago. It wasn't knockout. Now it is. So there's there's higher stakes for all of it. And what's on the end of it, having been fortunate enough to get to the grand final, you know how special that is. So for those that haven't been in that chair, that you, you, you just want that so much. So you're willing to give more. I think it's one of the hardest games to win of the year. Chris? Yeah, I think that's fair. I mean, it's just, again, I hate to go back to the really pragmatic and practical answer, which is when you get to this stage, you probably got the four best teams um, of the year um, in pretty good form. So it's always a really hard game. I think finals are really hard. When you finish in the top four every final, you play harder because you're playing the best teams. And, and then the stakes, uh, it, it is, you know, you think about trying to stay in the moment. Well, prelim finals are hard to stay in the moment, kind of either way, because projecting forward to what's possible for the next week if it goes well, or, you know, the feeling of, well, the... the it's abject depression, really. You know, if it doesn't work out, um, yeah, it just means the stakes are high and, yeah, just harder to stay in the moment. I think that's the best way to describe it. Good luck to you both. It's great to Thanks see you. Thanks for coming in. Chris Scott. Thanks for coming in.